Hello, Mike Polonzi back with another episode of Safe and Sound. Hopefully keeping some of you safe out there with the topics we talk about. Well, September is here. Labor Day's come and gone. Everyone says summer's over. I disagree. It was 80 degrees yesterday. Summer's not over till October. So what is happening in September is Realtor Safety Month. And I want to talk about Realtor Safety. Uh, realtors <clears throat> have a unique job. They put themselves in different situations with different people, people they do not know. It's, sometimes it's isolated in a rural area. Sometimes it's uh, in a busy rural area. Sometimes they're at office buildings. Um, a lot of times if they are commercial realtors, they're in showing real estate, commercial real estate in the afternoon or even on the weekends when most of the tenants aren't there. They meet during the day, they meet at night. By design, they're always putting themselves in a different situation. So we need to help them keep safe. A lot of different variables with that. <clears throat> I do always tell realtors, and I do a lot of realtor safety training, you know, when you get a new listing, take the opportunity to ride by, check the area out. Even residential, commercial, it doesn't matter. You know, I want you to look instead of see, and I'm going to talk about that later. Take a ride by, take a look at the surrounding buildings. Uh, the windows boarded up, the doors boarded up, uh, the neighbor's house is kept up, landscaping. Take a look at the cars around you. Are uh, the cars expired? You know, expired tags on the plates. Uh, they have missing uh, hubcaps, different kind of hubcaps. Look at the area around you, really see what's going on. And everyone goes, oh, Mike, I use Google Earth. Listen, I get it. Google Earth saves you time. That will give you the big picture if it's a really bad area. But nothing will give you all the clues by actually being there. You have to feel it. <clears throat> Real-time information is key to keeping yourself safe in a, in a different environment. Physically driving through, you actually get the feel of it. And I always tell people, drive through with a friend, drive through with someone else. Tell people where you're going. We always want to tell people where you're going, especially if you're going to go check out a new listing. Someone comes in, uh, you don't know, especially someone who walks off the street, no references, they want to sell a property. We all get excited as realtors. I'm not a realtor, but I have a lot of friends who are realtors, and I know that feeling. I, I see that they're always saying, that's great. Remember, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. Go with your instincts. <clears throat> Pray to see empty buildings as an opportunity, whether they're next in that building, maybe the building you're selling, or whether they hang out in the building next to where you want to sell. Be aware of that. I'm going to give you some different apps you can use. Keep yourself safe. I'm going to give you some diagrams uh, that are going to be posted how to park so you can leave. And the tip of the day, really excited about giving you men and women in real estate this one uh, i've given it to a bunch and they said that's a great idea never thought of it so we'll hit that at the end so let's talk about the way you dress listen i get it you dress for success that's awesome no one's gonna buy a multi-million dollar home if you're dressed in t-shirts bathing suit flip-flops i get it but <clears throat> when you dress up i want you to go through the jewelry you wear do you wear that expensive watch? If you got an expensive watch, and some have, you know, different real estate companies give these always bonuses. That's awesome. I always tell people, whatever you're going to wear, lay it out, and what we're going to do is we're going to buy knockoffs or fakes, whatever you want to call them. They look just like the real thing. Women who get engaged, women with diamond rings, or, you know, even more importantly, if someone has a grandmother's ring that's really special to them, a lot of sentimental value, something like that, People are less apt to give up if there's a problem. Have a different set made. Doesn't cost a lot of money. And if the worst case scenario happens where you, someone is demanding you give your property over to you in an isolated area, absolutely. What are they getting? They're getting knockoffs. So you're not losing your most prized possession. Your grandmother's watch, your grandfather's watch, um, or your grandmother's rings. So I always tell people, dress for success, but no one is going to take a look at your diamond ring and go, is that a cubic zirconian or is that a rear ring when they're buying a house? They're just going to say, oh, what a great looking ring, what a nice watch. Even if they don't say it, mentally it will present that you have expensive jewelry on. You're going to be dressed well. You're going to be dressed for success. 
And if something happens, it's not a disaster, not end of the world. <clears throat> Your physical safety is the most important thing. And I talk about this all the time. It's isolated homes. We're going to go over open houses shortly. Um, real estate agents all today, who doesn't have an online presence? I do, they do. Well, online presence in business also leads to online presence in personal life. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be bringing a uh, cyber security specialist on one of the shows, hopefully this month, to talk about cyber security and how to keep you and your family safe online. Because it's amazing, just a few posts will allow those people to transition from I'm um, selling a house to where I went to school to my class reunion, and so and they just keep drilling down. That's what these bad guys do. They just drill down all day trying to find out more information about us. Is social media a valuable tool? Absolutely, for people in business. I get it. But we have to be safe doing it, and you will be. <clears throat> so the National Association of Realtors, the member safety report, which you look at and I look at. During showing, 31% of realtors in their organization said they felt unsafe during a showing or during an open house, even when other people were there. So what's going on? Well. I think it's safe to say since 2020 and the pandemic and everyone through that, there's a lot of mental stress going on. People are feeling uneasy. People maybe aren't as polite as they should be or what they once were. You know, 15, 20 years ago, very rarely did we see people yelling at their relatives. Once in a while, but not as a rule. Now, it's a totally different ballgame. So these relatives are feeling unsafe 31% of the time in an open house surrounded by people. Some people think there's safety in numbers, and that's true. But safety in numbers is when you bring someone in. I always recommend, if possible, bring one or two other people with you. Check them in at the door, the person checking the door. Can somebody ask for an ID with a nice register? We're just going to keep track of who came through. All your information is private. As a rule, bad people won't want to give you an ID and won't come in the house. If you have a third person, have them hang out at the back of the house, make sure no one comes in through the back way, while your attention in the front, and then the realtor will take care of business in the main part in the middle of the house. That's the safe ways to do it. And I'm not talking about hiring other realtors. I understand everyone works in commission. I get it. If you have kids, if you have friends that want to come out for a few hours, make a day of it, another body that's there for you can give you a great sense of security, and you can make a fun day of it. And hopefully, you make that sale, get the commission, and life's a good day. When I saw 31%, I, you know, that's a lot of people that are feeling uneasy nowadays. So the atmosphere has changed where people are cordial and polite, um, tempers are short, stress is high, there's a lot of stuff in the media, that's a conversation for another day that gets people all upset. And a lot of it is not accurate information. So what else can we do? Well, you can run a background check. Research your clients if you're going to meet someone or if they come in the office and they say, hey, can you come in the building? You can check out the National Sex Offender Public, Sa Public website. It's called the NSOPW and also the National Center for State Courts. They provide online court records. And you can also look up, it's called Spot Crime. It's a crime mat and crime alert service in the area you're going to be going in. There are all kinds of services out there. I've talked to other realtors that use different things, and these are the ones that they use, and that's why I put this in. Safety considerations when we go into the property. I said, don't go alone. If you have a partner, colleague, go up. Dress sensibly. Okay, we're going to dress for success. Women cannot run effectively in high heels. Dress shoes, they make great dress shoes that are also feasible to run out of the house if you have to. And I say run out of the house, I mean not only down the walkway, but I mean also on the grass. So many people, not relatives, but others, have run away from an attacker in high heels. It traditionally happens at night after a bar or after a nightclub, they leave, and they, they're running through a field. And what happens, the high heels go down in the grass, they get stuck, they end up twisting their ankle, breaking their ankle, and they're down for the count. Uh, and that presents a whole other issue of how to defend yourself from the ground. And I probably will do ground defense sometime this year. So dress for success, but understand you want something useful that you can use to get out of the house. 
I already talked about knowing the area. If you walk in and create an emergency escape plan for every listing, we know that the standard is six to eight feet. We keep people away from us, keep furniture in between us when possible, and always know where the second exit is so you're not determined to have to go out that front exit. <clears throat> parking the property. So always, if possible, even during the day, I tell people, park in the street light. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know phone calls. I mean, this time of year, it's fine. It stays light till 6, 7 at night. I hate to say it. I'm sorry. Yes, we're going to be changing the clocks again. I don't know why we keep doing this, but it's going to come a time where it's going to be dark at 4 in the afternoon. You have a showing at 2, 3. We know it's going to get dark. Park under a street light. Avoid parking in the driveway if possible. Why? Because you can get blocked in. And everyone says, well, Mike, if I pull on the sidewalk or the side of the street, someone could block me in it. True. Well, people don't understand the defensive driving. The best way to get out of that is not to ram the car like you've seen in the movies. You don't want to ram the car backwards. And if you start slamming your car forward, what are we going to do? We're going to deploy our airbags. But you want to leave enough room to go up over the curb. Sure, run over someone's grass. That's all right. We'll fix the grass. So what are we doing? We're going to park on the side of the street, not next to a mailbox, not next to a telephone pole. Leave exit to the side. And there is a diagram coming up uh, to show you the proper way to do it and ways not to do it. I get it. In a perfect world, we can do this all the time. If you're going to park in someone's driveway, back in. And back in and try to keep the nose close to the edge, but with enough room, make a plan. If someone would pull up, could you, without backing up, drive left to right around the car that's blocking you? Okay, now we've done all that, life is good, what happens? <clears throat> well, there's some common, commonly used apps that people use. Um, I sent a link to these, find my phone, we'll share your lo location with friends and family, GPS phone for the tracker or Android. Uh, another one real estate you're using, it's actually made for real estate. It's a uh, agent safety feature, Sentry Key real estate. Automatically and discreetly alert your Merge your contacts when you do not feel safe. You can just set it on uh, intervals or you can hit it manually. Um, Forewarn. It allows real estate professionals to verify identity, search for criminal histories, and validate information provided by potential clients. Forewarn. Not a bad idea to ID everyone and do a background check on them. Um, check in with trusted sources. That's fine, but everyone knows in an open house, it's really hard for you to be calling at a radio interview. That's where our, our helpers come in, second, third person. Have them every 15, 20 minutes check in, text, yeah, we're good, we're okay. Have a plan. And we create this plan with people in your office, other people outside, just so there's always constant contact with the realtors and the people working in the open house that they have um, some communication. Don't rely solely on technology. Um, this is again according to the National Association of Realtors, member of safety report. 40% of real estate agents reported that they showed vacant properties in areas with poor and no cell phone coverage. 85% of those individuals reported feeling unsafe. Well, of course you feel unsafe. You're in an abandoned area, it's dark out with no cell service. That's when you absolutely want to incorporate the help of someone else to go with you in those locations. I mean, 40%, that, I mean, up for 31% from before, but now 40% are putting themselves at risk in abandoned houses, abandoned buildings, or empty buildings, isolated, dark at night. <clears throat> so a little prior planning. Situation awareness is the currency that buys you the time and opportunity to solve a tactical problem. <clears throat> And I'm going to give you all a drill, everyone in real estate business a drill to do on your next open house. And I hope you continue to do these on future open houses. As I mentioned earlier, look, looking versus seeing. Okay, what is looking? Looking is we look around, we place our eyes on something, but our brain really doesn't comprehend it. Seeing is mentally observing and interacting with your environment and paying attention. Your brain sees X over here. Why over there, something that can cause a problem or something that's out of the ordinary shouldn't be there. <clears throat> now that we're seeing that, 
We see something that's upsetting, something that may be dangerous. How does our body react? This is a whole course. I took a couple excerpts out of this. Fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. Flight, putting as much distance between yourself and the threat while escaping to a safer location. Again, going back to the proper shoes, the proper clothing, knowing the exit to get out. <clears throat> if you can't flee or fight, uh, flight, which I always suggest, listen, we win every fight we don't fight. That's the philosophy. If you don't fight, you're going to win that fight. Hopefully you can get out. If you have to fight a counterattack, do whatever it takes, whatever tools you have, and I'm gonna talk about the tools that real estate brokers have told me they've been using and carrying over the last uh, year. Um, I talked to a few, I'm not gonna mention any names, and I'm not gonna mention any real estate companies, but I will tell you some of the things are not a good plan, and we'll talk about getting proper training at the end of this, but do not carry things you see on TV or even things you buy um, up in Maine or New Hampshire, some are not legal in Massachusetts. <clears throat> so if we have to fight, we're going to use our training, we're going to use the proper tools, and we're going to win the fight. We are going home safe at the end of the day. If you've never been in that situation, adrenaline hits, you freeze. <clears throat> Hiding could be a reasonable version of freezing, but general results will be you'll just freeze, you won't have a plan in place, you won't have any training in place. That's the worst case scenario. We never want anyone to experience it. We don't want realtors to experience that. We don't want people traveling to work to experience that. We do not want any of the general public experience the freeze. Self-defense is not only physical, but it's mental training too. We have to get mentally prepared. <clears throat> if you feel fear, adrenaline, adrenaline, what does it do? Well, it lets you run faster, it lets you fight harder, but it also can diminish your fine motor skills. Um, if you get hit with ad adrenaline, the endorphins will kick in, release endorphins will give you a higher pain tolerance. That's why even after a car accident, you're checked out because in that moment, your adrenaline, your endorphins can kick in where you're actually injured, but you don't feel injured. The EMTs can come, hey, are you okay? I am, I feel okay, but they're still gonna check you out because five, 10 minutes later, it's all gonna come down, called the adrenaline dump. Um, tunnel vision, I do a ton of tunnel vision training where I'm not stressed. Tunnel vision really is three degrees of vision, which to put in perspective, if you take a roll of, um, from paper towels, paper towels are done, you put the roll up to your eye, close one eye, that's three degrees. So that's not a lot of vision. And then obviously audio occlusion where you can't hear. You can't hear someone yelling for help. You can't hear the threat because your audio, you have audio deprivation or audio exclusion. You can overcome all that with training. And I'm not saying you guys have to become black belt, you know, martial arts, kung fu masters. A few basic self-defense moves, some prior planning will go a long way. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> well, self-defense options that realtors use. <clears throat> These are just a few. I brought a few with me. Um, tactical pen or a coupon. For those of you who don't know, um, coupon training is available. This is close quarter combat training. We have to be touching the person. It's all pressure points. Um, the whole theory is you can take this and just jam in someone's chest or hit them in the face and the eye. As you advance, you'll learn wrist locks so you can push the person out. I'm not a fan of this, but I don't hate it as much as I do an item coming up. Sure, with this, this is actually a glass break on it, so you can have it in your pocket. If you get trapped in your car, you can break the glass, and it also will push someone off if you need to create distance and give them a hail palm to the nose. <clears throat> then I had someone say, well, if I have a problem, <clears throat> I'll just go to the kitchen and get a knife. So I went in my kitchen and I got a steak knife. Now, this is not a good plan. First you have to get to the kitchen, then you have to open the drawer, get the knife, grab the knife, and now you have to start stabbing someone with the knife. Not a great plan, and if you're gonna talk about tactical knives with folding knives, and I am bringing you those today, you need knife training. There is knife defense training. Keep in mind, 
When it comes to knife training, you're gonna get cut and the person's gonna get cut. Knife training is a whole nother world. I have a really great friend who teaches it. Uh, I'm gonna spawn some knife defense training. Sessions coming up in 2025. We're putting that together now. So I'm not a fan of the knives or stabbing someone. Tasers. <clears throat> okay. This is a taser. Actually, it's phaser. It's the newest version of taser. All right. A couple things about this. First of all, sure, you can go out and buy these out of state. In Massachusetts, you need a license to carry and you need to register it. I'm a taser instructor. Um, it's not a good product for civilians whatsoever. The way this works, and this is not like the movies. When you arc it and you push someone, it doesn't drop them, it just pushes them. It's called a drive stun. D-R-I-V-E, drive stun. Matter of fact, I'll do it for you. If you grab this and you, you arc it, and you push them out, push them out, it's a long five seconds. It will push them off you, but it does incapacity. What, to incapacitate someone with one of these, you need to load it up with two dots or prongs. And what happens is you deploy this, it hits their body, causes electromuscular disconnect, shuts their brain off, they fall to the ground. The American Medical Association says you can only do that 15 seconds in a 24 hour period. So all these are designed to shut off after three pulls, three five second pulls. How do I know all this? In order to be an instructor, I did have to get shot with it in the instructor course, so I've experienced electromuscular disconnect. Here's the thing. I was back in the fight in 30 seconds. For securing police, absolutely good product. For civilians, the average person on the street, I know they changed the law a few years ago. I'm not a fan of that law change. Again, you need to have a license to carry, a gun license, and you have to register these uh, with the state. And then people go, firearms. Well, yeah, you can get some firearms training. My little yellow training gun. <clears throat> it, I know a lot of people that carry these. They have to understand use of force laws. Can you just feel threatened, draw your gun? Not always. What do we have to prove? Well, in Massachusetts, we have to prove that the person we shot at had the ability, means, and intent of causing us serious bodily injury and or death. We have to prove that it was the minimum of force needed, that we had no reason mean to retreat or escape. So here we are. No reason mean to retreat or escape. We are bound by the law in Massachusetts outside our home. There's not an in-home security talk to retreat when necessary, a reasonable retreat. No one expects you to run across the highway, but they may expect you to go out the back door if possible. The average cost when you pull the trigger on a firearm, legal cost, is three to four hundred thousand dollars. In eight to ten years of court time, it's a disaster. What I was very happy to hear, and they showed it to me, a lot of real estate agents are carrying pepper spray. And this is my go-to. Um, I've, I've talked about this before here. I'm sure I'll talk about it again. Pepper spray is not mace. It's an all-natural product delivered by the face for one second. does three things. I know because I've been sprayed 31 times over the last 26 years. And over the last 26 years, I have documented 4 in 25 deployments where I've sprayed people in the face. I do not spray my civilian students that was in law enforcement, security training, or federal training that I've been a part of. Um, it's a non-lethal option to let a law. It's a food grade product. Anyone over 18 years of age can have it without a license. Right now, the way the, way the law reads, 15, 16, 17 year olds with an FID card can now pepper spray. And when this new law passes next month, they lower that age to 12. And I don't have a problem with that. And I could do a whole show on pepper spray and why it's no different than going out and picking a pepper out of your uh, garden and using it. No matter what self-defense option you choose, any of these, and if you come to me, I'm, I'm going to talk, do my best to talk you out of the taser, absolutely. Get trained. Get some kind of training. Get someone who knows it. Don't rely on the YouTube channels. Um, not everything on YouTube is accurate or safe to do.
All right, so we've gone over a lot of information for Real Estate Safety Month. I want you all to do these drills, two mental drills at your open houses. We want to get out of a bad situation. You feel uncomfortable. Again, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. Go with that. What do I want you to do? Grab your phone. Oh, this is my son. This is my daughter. I need to take this call or I need to make a call. We all know when we touch a button on the phone, it lights up. You don't have to show the person the screen. If they see the light come on, oh, it's my daughter or son. I need to take this call. Get out of the house. Always have your keys with you and leave. And I want you to do this if you have a son or if you have a daughter. I don't want you thinking about it. If you actually have a son or actually have a daughter, great. Go with that. Do these mental drills in your open houses. Another go-to, this is my vet. I need to take this call. It's about my dog or cat. I'll be right back in a minute. Excuse me, and out the door you go and you leave if it feels wrong. And do this if you have a dog, if you have a cat. If you have no problems right now, great, I'm happy for you. I want you to do this mental in your brain. Okay, something's wrong. I'm going to say to myself, oh, I have to take this call. It's for my daughter or my son. I'll be right back. And just, you don't have to leave the house. I'd like you to walk a few steps just to get a little muscle memory in your brain to leave. And you'll be uh, mentally prepared if something goes wrong. Because in the heat of the moment, if... I don't want you to have to think about this. I want you to say, yeah, I've said this like 30 times already this year, and it's just in your brain. Muscle memory will come back, and it will work well. All right. Well, that's all I have today for Real Estate Safety. It's Real Estate Safety Month. I hope you all have a great month and have some great training and great sales. I want to thank Chris Harvey, Michelle Lopez, as always. They do a great job helping me out, and my lovely wife, Lisa, who actually... Help me write the tip of the day for this episode. I'll see you next time.